want to create a brand new website or give your current one a facelift? Don't worry, Shinjiro's U Build plan has everything you need. Hello, I'm Puyan and welcome back to our tutorial series on how to use Shinjiro's website builder. Today, I'll be teaching you how to use widgets and how to add on to your pages and what they do. Alright, so we'll start by first logging into our website builder. If you're having trouble with it, we have a tutorial on our previous video. The link's right here. Okay, so today, we'll be covering grids, text, images, and buttons. Alright, so first up, we have grids. This will allow you to organize all your site elements such as media, text, and even more widgets. Let's start with adding a column. You can just click and drag the button to anywhere you want and place the column onto your page like this. And then now, you have all the foundation to everything else. Okay, from here, you can edit the appearance of the column and adjust its size, alignment, and even the color and background by just clicking on the column right here. And then we move to the sidebar and we can see you can adjust all these settings here. For now, I will adjust the width of the column and then now we will add a background to our website. So I'll just select this image. And I'll put it in here. And then now here's the fun part. We can add in an overlay as well. Say if the image is too dark for you, let's just add an overlay color. Um, I'm just going to pick this color. All right. And then here's the fun part. We can also add hover into the overlay. So let's say I pick a more different color for our overlay. And then now, see, once I hover over this, it changes color. It's cool, right? Now you can follow the same steps if you want to add more columns or rows. Here's what they look like and how you can adjust them via the sidebar. I'll go ahead and add some text to different rows, just like this. If you want to learn more about adding text and pictures onto your site, you can check out our previous video for the step-by-step -step instructions. Now, if you want to divide the boxes even further, you can just go here, get the inner row, and just drag it to anywhere you want. And then for this one, I will just drag another title here. And then you see a heading here. And then I can just add another inner row right here below. So you see, I now have two separate columns. And I can just add another text in here. And just like that, you got a grid that lets you organize all the media and elements the way you like them. Now, if you want to give your visitors an easy way to contact you, you can add a simple contact form to your website. So now we come over here to the widgets bar and find our contact button. But don't worry if you can't find it. All you need to do is just go to the search bar and look at contact form. And then now you just drag and drop this into anywhere you want on the page and you will see this label here. So to edit this, just go to the sidebar and click on the label. Okay, and then now here, you can change uh, the label name to, let's say we're going to do name, and then the field type will be text. And then we can also add more by clicking on this button here. And then now we have two columns here. So we're going to edit the other one. So this one, let's make it into a checkbox. Right? And then we change our label name. So, and then now you see here on your form, you have a little checkbox here. And now you can create more onto your form by selecting whatever other options you need. And then you're done. Okay, so the login widget helps you create custom login for your visitors to access part of your website. To use it, all we need to do is just go to the widget part and look for the login button. Just drag and drop onto your page, just like that. Then now, you have a form here and you can choose if you want to redirect on login or you want to redirect on logout. So this will allow your users to be redirected to another website when they click login or logout. Splash screens are a way to get your visitors' attention when they first visit your website. And they are e super easy to add. Just go to the splash screen widget. I will just get it off here. 
and then now we just drag it to the top of the page and then now you will see this this little thing here and you can choose if you want to display it once or you want it to always display all right once you've got all your pages set up and looking good we're gonna need a way for users to navigate so they can go any way they need to and whenever they need to that's where the primary menu comes to play now we go over to the search bar and look for the primary menu again just drag and drop anywhere you want the page as always and now you will see a menu generated based on the pages that you have already added to your website and from here on the sidebar you can adjust how you want it to look you can have it vertical or you can have it a drop down menu and you can even have pointer overline or whatever just play around and once you get something that you like and you're done in our first episode we covered adding basic text and images onto your page so now in this section I'll expand a little on that and show you the other things that you can put on your site and how to edit them. Alright, first up, the text elements. Let's start with the title. You can use this for create headers for all your pages. And all you have to do is just drag the title over to your website just like this. And then you can just type in anything you want. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Just like this. Okay. And then after that, you can also edit the header by heading to heading styles and you can change to any color you want. So we'll just stick to this color and then we can also add, um, maybe change the size as well. And there you have it. If you want to jazz up your title, you can also try using the animated heading feature. Just come over to the widgets and click and drag the animated header widget onto your page just like this and then now you will see this animated heading here so we're gonna go over to the sidebar and click on the effects and let's just click rotating and now you will see there's a rotating effect going on here okay now let's say I don't like this effect so I can just come back to the sidebar and let's select a uh, slide alright now see it's it feels nicer to me right now okay for this tutorial i will also show you how you can change the title style also same thing on the sidebar you can choose the color right here i'm gonna make mine pink this and then you can also change the text here just make sure you separate each point with a comma and now you know how to make an animated heading next we'll add a quote now this will be very useful if you want to highlight a particular section of text in your blog or article just like before we'll drag the quote button to wherever you want on the page and just drop it like that and then now we can just change the text by going to the sidebar just like that now you can even use the sidebar to edit the style of the code or even change the author and even link link the URL if it's an external website. Now that you have an idea on how to add and edit different elements and widgets, I'll give you a run through of all the different text widgets and what they do. So we got a batch widget which is great for labeling specific sections and links on your page. So here you see me adding a batch onto the website and you can just key in the URL and the, at the site I'll just like this and you can also edit the text on the label as well so now when visitors click on this they will bring you to the external website that you have set for the batch if you want to add additional information or different sections of text or you would like to have a secret message that pops up when visitors hover over parts of the page you can always add a tooltip once you've placed the tooltip widget wherever you want on your page, you can just go to the options and then you can change the text. Say, read me. And then at the content here will be the small pop up that you will see later. And then if you want to add an icon, you can just go to the icon tab 
and just click on show icon. And now people will know there's something down here. And when you hover over it, see, you'll see a small message here. If you run a website selling goods or services, you'll want to be able to let your visitors know how awesome your stuff is. And that's why you use the testimonials. I'll just add one here so you can see the settings at the sidebar here. So you can also enter the site tab. You can change the name of the testimonial. And you can even add a picture if you want. If you have several reviews, you can always add a testimonial slider to save space. Now this one's a little tricky because you have to adjust the timing a little bit. But you can just play around with the sidebar and you will get whatever you like. Now that we have covered the text widgets, let's take a look at all the image widgets that, and what you can do with them. In our previous tutorial, we have covered how to add a single image. But what if you want to add several pictures without taking up too much space? You can always add an image slider. To do that, just click and drag the image slider widget over to your page. And then now we can upload the pictures on the sidebar here. Okay, let's just choose a few and we just add it. You can then adjust the size and even the speed of the transitions by going onto the options menu on the sidebar. If you want to showcase all your images in a grid, just use the grid gallery tool. Just like before, we will just drag and drop the tool onto our web page, just like that. Now we go to the sidebar and add images and select all the images that we need. Now remember that the sequence will come out according to which one you select. So be mindful of how you want your grid to be arranged. And we insert gallery. And now we have this. And now we back to the sidebar. You can use the setting to adjust the columns gap and the row gap. And you can even change if you want to link the pictures or not. Finally, we'll show you how to organize your images in a portfolio. This is great if you are an artist and want to display your work online. To do that, just come over to the tools bar and click on image portfolio. Just drag and drop onto your web page and now you will see this. Now you can add images depending on how many you want to display. Just click add new image item. And now you will see a different image pop up. And from here, you can click on select image and select the one you want to display in the gallery. Here you can also change the category. Let's say we put this one. And now you see up here, you have few more categories. So when people view your folio, they can just click on whatever that interests them instead. To adjust the size and even overlay, just go over to the sidebar and click on image style to access the settings there. And you can also change the button styles by going to the button style menu here. Speaking of buttons, our final segment is all about buttons and how you can use them to enhance your website. We'll start with the standard button widget. And what's cool about this one is that you can fully customize what you want to do without any additional codes or widgets. Now we'll start by clicking and dragging the button widget over to our page here. And right here in the sidebar, you can edit the text and you can also add in any links that your, you want your button to lead to. What's interesting about this widget is that the, you can change the color depending on its function. So you can see on the screen that default is gray, primary is blue, Secondary is darker grey, success is green, info light blue, warning is yellow, red for danger, and then we have dark and light which are just black and white. And now if you want to change the colour to say a different colour, you can just always go to the sidebar and look for custom. And then here you can change the background colour to whatever you like. Next up, I'll show you how to organize all your buttons so they look neater. To do that, just drag the group button widget over to the website. And then you can add buttons on the site 
however you like. Now you can also click on one of the buttons and then you can edit the button text like all the buttons before and then you add a link as needed. The link could be internal or external and it's totally up to you. Now if you host any media that you would like your visitors to download, you can easily add a download button. All you need to do is just drag and drop the download button widget onto your page. And on the sidebar, under media file, you can just upload the media and insert it into the button. Now when people click on download, they can get your file. After that, you can choose to edit the text or maybe change the color of the button and even the alignment of the button and then you're done alright so that's it for today's lesson the Shinjiro website builder is actually very intuitive and actually very easy to use so I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to quickly build your dream website if you have any questions do check out the FAQ linked in our bio and if you have any more questions, you can just always ask our friendly customer service via Telegram. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us. Thank you and stay safe.